My name is H. John Mejia. I'm an American entrepreneur and marketing sales strategist. I'm also involved in the TV and digital media world. And over the years, I've worked with top companies and interviewed thousands of people. From billionaire business moguls to top political figures to movie stars, celebrities, and superstar athletes. Yeah, those who are at the top of their game. I've always had a passion for meeting people and learning about their journey to get deeper insight about who they are and what they did to achieve their success. That's exactly why I was inspired to be part of this show with Hammer Fiber Studios to share my business experiences as it relates to media, marketing, sales, and entrepreneurship giving insights and strategies that can help take business to the next level. So get ready to enter the zone with the Business Zone TV show right here, right now. Well, we're back and welcome back for episode two of the Business Zone TV show. I'm your co-host Bobby D and I'm so excited about having H. John Mejia here because he's bringing us uh, via his programming tremendous wisdom from his diverse uh, business experiences. And what I want to do from, um, I want to share some of his experiences, his accomplishments are, are, are nothing short than remarkable. And um, just uh, a little bit about him. He's been part of a startup company that went from zero to $20 million. Uh, he co-built a marketing agency that has been in business for 22 years, incredible accomplishment. Uh, that company has transacted over $300 million in gross revenue and at one time had over 100 employees. He's been part of a multi million dollar merger and acquisition deal, has built a consulting business, uh, built a TV and video production agency that has produced for national TV and Fox Sports, has interviewed hundreds of celebrities, pro athletes and movie stars, and he's a former college football player standout who actually signed contracts with both the NFL and the USFL and among many other things. So we're going to get into it today. I'd like to... Uh, Pull him in live from beautiful St. Petersburg, Florida, H. John Mejia. Welcome back, H. Hey, Bobby. Great to be back with you here at Hammer Fiber Studios and, and be visiting with the Hammer Fiber com community. Uh, what an incredible first episode we had. Uh, what an experience it was. And uh, we made history in doing that. So that was a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward to episode two. And yes, indeed, Bobby, you're right. You remember your days here in Florida. It is indeed beautiful weather here in St. Pete, Florida, uh, the best in the world. Sure is. Well, let's get into it. Let's reinforce some of the quick takeaways from the first episode, H, if you don't mind. Well, first of all, that one-hour episode was absolutely incredible. Such action-packed information that if you hadn't seen episode one, I urge you to go back and take the time to, to hear and watch and listen to episode one. But some quick highlights that I want to emphasize. The Business Zone TV show is real simple. We're here, uh, Bobby and I are here to share business ideas and strategies. Our intention, our game plan is to stimulate your thinking to help you to get take action towards building a business, towards building your dream. Uh, we're all about encouraging people to um, create their opportunities, for, for them to go out and live their dream for them to go out and become the best version of themselves. Uh, and it's important in business to be the best version of yourself because our, my opinion is that your mindset is just important as the strategies behind the business. Your mindset is just as important, Bobby, uh, as your execution, this, uh, executing the strategies. Uh, our focal point is real simple. We want to inform you. We want to inspire you. We want you to get you to take action. And we want you to execute what you want to deliver uh, with your dreams out in the marketplace. Also, another note, uh, note Bobby, from uh, episode one, 78% of the 28.8 small businesses in the marketplace, 78% of them are single, single owner operators or one-person companies. Hmm. Uh, so the, the, the opportunity is wide open for everybody. Uh, the average, we talked about money uh, on episode one, Bobby, if you remember. The average U.S. median income uh, is $59,000 a year. So 49 plus percent make more than that, 49 percent make less than that. The top one percent, do you remember, Bobby, what was the top one percent income? Oh, it was the top, uh, just a little over 300,000. I, I don't remember exactly the number. Our, but our, Okay, Bobby, 389,000 is the top one percent. And the top 6% is 
is making $200,000 or, or more a year. The top 6% uh, uh, make $200,000 or more a year. There's no better time than now in the, in the, in the communication age that we're in, the digital age. Uh, things are happening fast. There's no better time to get involved in business, uh, to access the social media platforms of communication out there, to build your brand, uh, to do it where it's affordably, and most importantly, where it's accessible. Everybody can do and create their dreams and expand their income circle. And those are just a few of the things that we learned in episode one. Right. And, and for the viewers, they can go to hammercommunity.com to catch the uh, archives of the first show and all the shows from this point on. So uh, I didn't know you were going to quiz me on these shows, so I really <laughs> got to pay attention. I, I saw, Bobby, I kind of caught you with the left hook there. I well, saw that. Well, I, at least I was in the 300000 <laughs> range, that's for sure. I mean, that's what the, the uh, President of the United States earns, so uh, that's why I remembered <laughs> You, you, you did good. I didn't, uh, you didn't get knocked down on that. Good job. All right. So what's your insights uh, you want to share for the audience uh, today, H? Uh, we, have, we have a great show today, and we've got a lot of great content and information coming at you. So today is about sharing some ideas that can help you as you're getting started with your business or you're contemplating starting your business, or maybe you want to refresh your existing business, right? You want to do a makeover. Uh, I want to share some ideas. And I want to shatter some thoughts, shatter some old beliefs that you don't need to have $100,000 or a million dollars. You don't need a fancy building. You don't need to start out with 100 employees. Those things are not the norm. That's just the reality. The norm is what? 78% of all small businesses have one single owner operator. And oh, Bobby, by the way, 50% of all small business owners uh, operate out of their house. So... Uh, let's talk. Let's start with thought number one. Um, thought number one is that there will never be a perfect time. Right. There will never be a perfect time. There'll never be a perfect time that you're going to have all the money you need to start a business. There'll never be a perfect time to have all the conditions aligned uh, for you to start marketing your product or your services or whatever business you want to get into. Uh, the reality is is that you never want to be, you want to be catching yourself, I'll do it when. That's a famous line. Oh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it when. I'm going to do it when we get through the holidays, and I'm, I'm going to do it when, when we get through the December and the Christmas holidays and the New Year's. I'm going to do it when the New Year starts. I'm going to do it when. Let me tell you that tomorrow never comes. Uh, so you have to start now. Start small. Uh, you can take action, and even if you commit to doing something, this is a strategy, this is one of the most powerful things I can share, Bobby, is that even if you start by allocating 10 minutes a day for you to sit down and take the focus, time, and attention to start planning, start thinking, uh, start getting excited about what you want to do, what type of business you're, you're in, uh, want to get in, or if you're in an existing business, if you just took 10 minutes a day you can start moving towards that dream of building your own business. Um, you know, it's. I recollect back with the di di different various companies that I've started, uh, Bobby, my production, my TV video production agency that I started officially, I think in 2002, I built that company from scratch while I was running other companies, running other companies full time. So remember, in the evening, you have opportunities to get away from the TV set and take time hours you have hours in the, at night time to do some work uh, and you can commit to building your dream um, you can figure out what you need to do what you want to do how you want to monetize it what product what service you want to do and uh, just watch less TV you can start building your dream mm -hmm. um, idea strategy number two Bobby is take a simple idea a simple idea to get started a lot of times, um, you might come up with an idea. Let's say you and I are brainstorming. The idea might be so simple that you say, ah, that's not good enough. Right. It's not fancy enough, right? It's not high-tech enough. But guess what? A simple idea that has a vision and is well executed will work 10 times better than any fancy, elaborate idea that you never get around to executing. 
Uh, and then once you develop your idea, a simple plan, then it's easy to start. Well, it's not easy. I apologize for saying that. Then you take action to start developing what's your company going to be called? Right. What's the name of your company? You want to have an identity, a brand, a logo behind that. You want to have a basic one-page website to start. You want to have maybe a Facebook business page. You want to have a business cards. Those things all come together that allow you to start now taking the idea, the concept, to manifest it, Bobby, into the reality and start making it happen. You start small, uh, and then you can start building as you go along. You can start marketing as you go along. Uh, find that one product. Uh, that one service, that one idea that you can market, bring to the marketplace and monetize and start getting paid for it. Um, you don't have to wait till you have a 25 uh, product line inventory of things to offer out there. Get started small. I hope that kind of makes sense, Bobby. Of, you know, these are just some basic ideas and strategies to, that people can start with. No, no, it makes a lot of sense. But you know what? You corrected yourself on saying it's not easy, but when you're passionate about something, H, it is easier, isn't it? I mean, it cuts through the adversity in style, I think. You, you, know, you, you, you know, think about it. If you're passionate about it, you love what you're doing, or you want to get connected to, and you take a passion that you want to monetize, yeah, the, the work energy to it becomes easier Right. than doing something that you're forced to do. Exactly. You love it, and that's for but sure. The, that, that, that's, that's the key. Right. So the execution of the little steps, of, the, of the, the, the little steps that need to become involved to think through and execute, that's not easy because, you know, 50% of all businesses are done in five years. Right. 35% are done in the first two years. So, you know, hum with uh, uh, humility is that uh, it's not easy, but it's when you do something you have passion about, you, you can do it. Um, you don't need a million dollars. Another idea. You don't need to have the big funding. You don't need to have $100,000. You can start on a shoestring budget. You could start in a home office, Bobby. Uh, you could have a little bit of mo money set aside to do some marketing to get your exposure and get attention. But today in the media platforms that we're on, you could do it so cost effectively and so targeted that, you know, I come from a TV background where, you know, you have to spend, you know, TV, radio, advertising, $10,000 a month to get brand exposure. With Now with the media communications that we have, we can target your market, target your area, where you want to do, who you want to communicate to, and do it for a, a fraction of what traditional advertisers used to spend. It's ultimately just so mind-blowing. Yeah, um, for sure. You know, I, I remember back in college, um, one of my coaches owned, owned a roofing, uh, he had a roofing company, family business. And during the summer, I used to go uh, to a neighborhood and I used to, in the hot heat weather, go on knocking on doors and hanging uh, door hangers uh, about promoting the roofing business. Mm. And I would just do that and just get out of my car drive to a neighborhood, get out of my car, hustle, walk down the neighborhood, meet people, shake hands, promote the roofing business. And then we used to get roofing jobs. And I used to get a fat commission check uh, where I knew nothing about roofing. I knew nothing about how to uh, roofing products or the shingles or how they did it. All I did was market the services. The deal would come through and I would get a nice 15% commission check off of that deal. And that's just how you do it. It's about hustling. Right. It's about getting out there in the marketplace and making people aware of what you're doing. Um, another thing, Bobby, is, hey, if you ask me, be careful about thinking about leaving your day job mm. and be careful about maxing out your mortgage equity and be careful about taking your 401k plan out and maxing all your credit cards out to go into a deal. Uh, I just urge you with caution that you can do small steps where you could start part time, work in the evenings, work in the in the uh, uh, the weekends, and build your dream, build your company, and start small and have step stepping stones. Hey, if you're an aggressive opportunity op 
op- entrepreneur and you want to go after your opportunity and go all in, hey, great. A lot of people have done that. But also on the same token, the guy that makes it, there's a lot of fallen, wounded business owners that uh, the business didn't take off, was slower to progress. Now they're maxed out. They have no job, steady income coming in. And now anxiety and stress begins to cycle. I've been there. I've done that. So I'm talking from experience from the streets of business that uh, it's a very uncomfortable place that you want to be, uh, that you don't want to be in. So think, think small steps to get to your big vision and uh, don't go all in and you, you build up all these debts and expenses and ongoing operations, you, you know, getting the office space and all these employees and you haven't even made your first sale yet. We'll have much more of these types of uh, discussions uh, as it relates to media, marketing, sales, entrepreneurship, and personal development on the Business Zone TV show with H. John Mejia. We'll be right back. Known as one of the country's top sales and marketing experts, entrepreneur, speaker, and TV personality, H. John Mejia is the driving force behind In The Zone TV, Capital Marketing Concepts, and The Good Life Tampa Bay TV Show. Headquartered in beautiful downtown St. Petersburg, Florida, H. has advised and counseled hundreds of small and medium-sized businesses, including many Fortune 1000 companies. H's sales, marketing, TV, and entrepreneurial expertise comes from more than 20 years of learning, applying, and honing cutting-edge strategies that produce high-impact results. During his career, he has helped companies generate over $1 billion in new and incremental sales revenue. An overachiever all his life, H always brings his A-game of ideas, products, and passion to help clients break through to get their sales to the next level. Isn't it time for you to team up with H. John Mejia and allow him to help you produce the results you are looking for? Call now for a free consultation and let H show you how his proven and guaranteed strategies can help you increase sales to the next level. All right, we're back at the Business Zone TV show with H. John Mejia. I'm your co-host, Bobby D. And, uh, hey, let's uh, talk it up. Let's talk about the lessons, uh, H., uh, that you've picked up along the way. And in forecasting, I, I, I think I did. But as people budget and forecast, what they should do is that they're budgeting. They should add on another 50% after they're budgeting. Because mm. what happens is you have unexpected costs, Bobby, that comes up. It's just inevitable in all these types of businesses and projects. You sometimes come in and a lot of businesses are underfunded. Uh, so you have to add an extra 50% would be a good rule of thumb when you do your detailed budgeting and forecast. And then you add 50% to your expense budget so you get yourself properly um, situated. Also, you can go to a bank and get funding. Uh, it can be challenging because oftentimes as a new business, think about it, the bank is not uh, in the business of making high-risk loans, right? Mm-hmm. And typically a new business startup can be uh, determined to be high-risk. Uh, a lot of times you'll need to do what's called sign a personal guarantee. You might have a company that you started. You might be an S-Corp. You might be an LLC that you form uh, because when you form a business, you basically give a new life, a protection uh, from yourself personally, but the reality is a lot of times the bank says, hey, listen, you've, the, the company has no assets, no no uh, receivables. We're going to have to ask you, Bobby, to sign personally to guarantee this loan for your business, and that's going to be your call with what yeah. you do and how you do it. Um, other sources for f- uh, funding, you can go to, to family and friends, uh, associates out in the marketplace, but you need to be careful with that. Uh, you need to know uh, are you going to give up a percentage? Are they going to make an investment in your dream and your opportunity? And they're going to want a percentage of the deal? Mm. Uh, now you have partners that you have to be responsible for. Uh, or now are you, in essence, doing a loan, uh, a loan to them? And then what happens if the deal goes bad? It's happened. That's the reality. And all of a sudden, then, you get people that are upset and disappointed. And then, guess what? 
on your next deal and the third deal, guess what? You 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 don't you don't have any access to go back on the next next round for budgeting for financing when that happens. So those are things to think about in terms of ramifications. Right. We talked about you don't need to get an office space for fancy buildings. Uh, Bobby, 50% of all small businesses operate out of the founder's home. Uh, there are locations. There are locations you can go and get what's called shared office space. Right. You can go in and get your reduction of rent dramatically. Instead of taking over a 2,000 square foot facility, you can share office space and reduce your investment. Or, Bobby, did you realize there's also places you can get just to have your mailing address. You can pay a fee to have your mailing business address into a nice corporate center and give the appearance of, you know, of, of being uh, a business a little bit bigger than what you are in starting out. So those are some ideas that are out there. Uh, you know, you have to keep asking and searching for solutions. The, the, ideas, the ideas and strategies are out there, but when you get on your journey as an entrepreneur, you keep searching and it's like a little seed. You're going to plant a little seed in the ground and you need to keep nurturing it and growing it and expanding that for it to grow strong and healthy. And that's the, the analogy of a business. Uh, it takes a lot of patience and a lot of activities. Talk, let's talk about some low mar uh, cost marketing initiatives, Bobby. You, you can get out there and go old school, do some guerrilla marketing. Right out of the trunk of your car, you can give away samples, you can network, you can go to meetings, you can get re uh, referrals, you can give uh, from the people you give samples to, get initial orders. Uh, you can design a simple PowerPoint presentation to, to give um, to, to prospective clients on who you are and what you're doing and what the vision is and how the product you have, the service you have, uh, uh, provides a solution. Um, also, be prepared when you start your business, Bobby. You got to be able to do it all. You're mm. going to be the CEO, the sales uh, vice president. You're going to be the marketing <laughs> director. You're going to wear you're going to wear those different hats above mm -hmm. behind you. Yeah. Uh, you're going to do it all, and you're going to do billing. You're going to do invoicing, and that's how you can start in getting the traction to build your business. So uh, that's all the things that entrepreneurs are willing to do. So don't come into the business and think you're too big and too proud to pick up things or do things because you know what you need to be able to be do do it all and then you duplicate yourself accordingly uh it's so imperative to make that first sale to get that first traction to make that transaction get that first customer that's so important in getting sales uh of your product and services to the marketplace uh there's nothing more powerful to develop your clients and they can become influencers for your business, Bobby. Those clients can help you build more clients. Uh, and it starts that small fire. Uh, it takes a hard work to get it started. And then once you start building your company and your business, you can start scaling up. But there's a lot of effort in nurturing and getting started. Satisfied customers telling others. I, a lot. You gave a lot of wisdom here. One of them that... I had never even thought about if I could go back years is to budget yourself uh, with an additional budget of 50% because when things are going to go wrong because I've been there I'm sure the viewers some of you have been there where when things crash you don't have the budget to recuperate and you're out of business so having that contingency plan of 50% that's brilliant advice I like yeah. the uh, the advice you've been sharing about the, the business centers to keep the overhead down to you know give a, a better business image and, and whatnot so this is loaded H Outstanding. yeah I mean, there's, it's all the little things little all these little things make the difference into building your dream in your in your business and you don't have to do it where you go all in and leverage yourself out to the and, and quit your job uh, you can do it uh, prudently step by step uh, and those are just ideas from my perspective they might be crazy uh, but that's what I feel from my experiences in the marketplace. Yeah, it worked. So where do we go from here? Well, you know, I think sometimes the best lesson, I've been doing a lot of talking here, um, sharing some ideas and strategies. What I want to do now is I have a, a video segment that I'm going to have you queue up here in a second. Okay. And this is the co-founder of a unique dynamic company that started about 12 years ago. Uh and this is an actual segment from the TV show airing mm. uh, where I did a one-on-one -on -one hour TV special with this outstanding 
young entrepreneur. And I'm going to give you about a 10 minute video clip that I want you to listen to and watch. And hear, watch a, a young man that's built a company into a $75 million plus a year company wow. with over 100 franchisee owners around the country. Uh, I'm so impressed with this young man. And uh, uh, why don't you just go ahead and cue it up, Bobby? And let's go ahead and roll that video and show the audience here uh, this interesting Talk about uh, an interview. American success story and someone living the dream. Nick Friedman's path to multi-million dollar success centers around junk removal. That's right, over 12 years ago, he co-founded College Hunks Hauling Junk and Moving Company and has grown that company into a dominant national franchise with over 100 franchisees across the country and are headquartered in beautiful Tampa, Florida. Nick's resume of accomplishments is a long one. He has been named among the top 30 entrepreneurs in America under 30 by Inc. Magazine a two-time Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award finalist, and he's also been named one of the top 35 entrepreneurs under 35. He has appeared on The Oprah Winfrey Show, ABC's Shark Tank, Bravo's Millionaire Matchmaker, The Pitch, and on CNBC's Blue Collar Millionaires, among many others. Nick, along with his business partner, Omar Solomon, wrote the best-selling book, Effortless Entrepreneur, Work Smart, Play Hard, Make Millions. They have been featured on The Wall Street Journal, Fast Company Magazine, USA Today, Entrepreneur Magazine, CNN, and Newsweek, among others. And guess what? On top of that, Nick is a dynamic speaker and shares his knowledge at business conferences across the country. They were featured in a Newsweek article, College Kid to Millionaire, which also included the founders of Facebook, FedEx, Dell Computers, Google, and Microsoft. This success story all started back in the spring of 2004 as Nick and Omar entered a business plan competition with a concept centered around junk removal. While other junk services had poor appearances and were local, they had a vision of a fully branded, clean appearance and a scalable national franchise. Guess what? They won the competition in the $10,000 prize and their American business dream started to become a reality. I first interviewed Nick back in 2010, and I was so happy to catch up with him again. And man, they've accomplished so much in building this multi-million dollar national business. And guess what? Nick even has bigger plans for the future. Hey, Nick, thanks so much for having us here at your office. The energy here is absolutely electric. We have a lot to talk about, so let's get started. Let's go back in time, 2004, that business plan concept. Tell us about the business plan and why was it geared towards hauling junk removal business? So we were actually going into our senior year of college. We were home in Washington, D.C., which is where we were originally from. Uh, my buddy and I from high school, Omar Solomon and I, we were home for summer vacation just trying to figure out what we were going to do. And his mom had this beat up cargo van from her furniture store. So she said, you know, listen, guys, you're not going to just sit around the pool all summer. Go out and do something with this cargo van. So we're sitting around the table trying to think about what is it that we could do and we didn't have a lot of technical skills so we said you know why don't we haul people's junk away and charge them a fee for it. Whose idea was it? Yours or Omar's? Uh, honestly I think it was Omar's idea initially and then his mom actually uh, threw out the name College Hunks will haul your junk and we all kind of busted out laughing and then we like kind of looked at each other we're like well that's actually got a kind of catchy ring to it so we shortened it to College Hunks hauling junk put it on computer print out flyers and just started sticking it around the mailboxes and neighborhoods People had the need for the service, they thought the name was catchy, and so that was really the light bulb for us was, wow, this could be an actual opportunity here. Well, talk about the brand, college, you know, your, your trucks, your logo, your colors, your brand, your identity. That's been a big part of your success or a part of your success. Talk about that, and as was there any kind of wavering moments of moving away from the brand and changing it? You know, our, so our brand has really been a key piece of our growth over the years, and it's what I like to call, uh, a, I refer to a book that was really influential to us called The Purple Cow. The idea is if you're driving down a country road and you see a big field of brown cows, you're just going to keep driving because you've seen it before, but if there's a purple cow, it stands out because it's different, it's unique, it's remarkable. So the name, you know, is kind of a pattern interrupt. It makes people think, well, that's not really what I would typically associate with a junk hauling or moving company. The colors are bright orange and green. You can't miss the trucks wherever they drive by. And then to make sure that we back it up is we try to provide a memorable and, and positive experience and service for the customers. So it's not just about the sizzle uh, of the name and the colors, but the actual you know, service experiences as well. And yeah, there was a time over the years you know, where we started to question, you know, is it too quick? Quirky, or is it too gimmicky? Uh, you know, do we need to kind of go with something a little bit more mainstream? 
and people would ask us questions like, hey, you know, are they all really hunks? You know, are they all really in college? And you kind of, you know, get a little bit tired of answering those questions. So that's why we would start to question it. But ultimately we realized that, you know, the brand is what really sets us apart from the other companies. We actually came up with an acronym for hunks. We say it stands for honest, uniformed, nice, knowledgeable service. So it's more than just, you know, physical looks or, or brawn. It's about, you know, the overall service experience that, that our guys are, are providing when they go out to haul people's stuff away or move people's furniture. And that really has been the key to our success over the years. I, I remember watching a show a few years ago, actually, you, you guys have been obviously noticed on many different shows. There was one show that was when you guys were expanding into the moving, complementing your hauling junk business, and I think the agency was recommending a different name, a different company. They were pitching you on that, but how did you guys stay true to adding just the moving, which I think is brilliant, but talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so we actually appeared on a show called The Pitch. It was on AMC, and it was uh, featuring companies that were looking for marketing or branding advice. And at the time, we were adding moving services on top of our junk removal services, and there was some concern about whether the, the name College Hunks Hauling Junk uh, would create some confusion or perhaps would be uh, a turnoff for people when it comes to moving their personal belongings because it's one thing to have your junk hauled away it's another thing to have your stuff moved and so we had the, the ad agencies uh, make some recommendations and a few of them recommended that we actually rebrand the moving side of the business we considered it uh, ultimately we decided that it was you know a risk we weren't willing to take we felt like there was already market adoption of the college hunks brand uh, so we kind of just added and moving to our already long name uh, which again you know isn't ideal but it works you know our, our we have over now 100 franchises around the country uh the customers still love our, our brand and our service uh so you know any second thoughts that we've had we sort of put those to rest and now we said you know we're just going to double down and, and focus in on college hunks hauling junk and moving now beautiful i know i love it i saw that because i remember i was watching that show and i was like and i watched maybe a year later i saw oh they added on the moving aspect of it and maintained the brand integrity which i think obviously is a, is a great move uh, talk about back in the day out of college you guys got good jobs both you and omar you, you got good paying jobs you were consultants or in a in the business and then all of a sudden you know, you didn't do the 10 years and get burnt out. You were like saying, hey, I've got to get out of here. Talk a little bit about that. And what was the motivation to get you guys to walk away from that? A lot of people didn't think that was a good idea back then. Talk about that. Yeah, so when we first graduated from college, we actually got corporate jobs. Even though we had, you know, hauled junk in a cargo van the summer before, we actually had won a business plan for college hunks hauling junk during our senior year of college. But we were always brought up to follow the traditional career path. You get a degree, you get a job, you climb the corporate ladder. And so that's what we did. And about six months into it, I was just feeling really unfulfilled. I couldn't picture myself doing this for another 10, 20, 30 years of my life. So I emailed Omar and said, hey, you know, what's our timeline for starting College Hunks on a full-time basis? And he emailed me back all capital letters. You know, my timeline's right now, exclamation point, let's do this. And uh, so we quit our job. Were you thinking now too, or were you thinking maybe six months from now when you're- You know, I was just thinking, you know, hey, you know, are, 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 are you up for this, you know, challenge? Cause I'm, I'm starting to feel kind of antsy behind this desk and in this cubicle. And our parents were skeptical, friends and family, you know, we saw some raised eyebrows. People were saying, you know, you're gonna quit your jobs to do what, haul junk? And the company's gonna be called what, College Hunks? Uh, you know, you're basically throwing away your degree to start a trash business is basically what they were telling us. But, you know, we used that as motivation to kind of put a little bit of a chip on our shoulder. We wanted to prove everybody wrong. We wanted to create this national brand. And I remember when we first started, we were doing all the work of our, ourselves. You know, we were answering the phone, we were driving the trucks, we were hauling let the Let me junk. get delivery. Nick, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nick, let me get sales. This is Nick and sales. <laughs> That's right. And, well, actually, I always tell the story. We would be multitasking in the truck, maybe swerving. So people would call the 800 number to complain about the erratic driving. And I I'd be the one in the driver's seat answering the phone saying, you know, listen, we don't condone that type of driving in our company. We'll tell those guys to be safer back on the road. Uh, you know, we apologize. So we, we probably fired ourselves three or four times that first summer uh, before we realized that we needed to work on the business, not in it, if we were ever going to scale to the next level. And scale they did, eventually outgrowing their space in Ybor City to one several times that size in their new Tampa headquarters. I had a chance to go over there with Nick and see the new location they were moving to which was very impressive, especially when you consider their story on making their very first sale. The lady shows us her old furniture that she needed to get rid of, some stuff in her backyard. Uh, we kind of threw out a price. We weren't quite sure what to charge. You know, we said, you know, 200 bucks. And she's like, okay, great, get started. So I guess we looked at each other, we're like, okay, I guess this is gonna work. So we got outside in the, in, in the backyard. We, we bend down to start picking up this uh, pile of rubbish. And as soon as we bent down to pick it up, it was like, you know, the skies opened up and it started pouring down rain on us. And we looked at each other we're like, whoa, 
are we really about to embark on this adventure? It was like this mo point of no return, so to speak. And I remember having that moment with Omar, my business partner, where we looked at each other and we said, okay, let's get it in the truck, let's go. It's our first job, let's get it done. And uh, we haven't looked back since. Now, obviously, that first sale was the start of something special. But like any business, there are money funding concerns. I asked Nick, how did he and Omar fund the cash to start and run their new business? We really did bootstrap the business for the most part and grew it very organically. Uh, we didn't have a lot of access to capital. We didn't have a big lofty business plan to try to you know, blow it out of the water from day one. Uh, so for us, it started with some computer printout flyers, some ads on the internet, and of course we needed the truck. So when we originally started, it was a beat up cargo van that we borrowed from uh, my business partner's mom's furniture store. After that, we were able to get our first truck by having our parents help co-sign on a bank loan uh, for, uh, for our very first commercial dump truck and from that point on you know we were still living in our parents basement parking the trucks at their house and uh, eventually we kept reinvesting 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 to the point where we could afford our own truck get our own office uh, start hiring our own employees uh, so everything was really hand-to-mouth ever since day one uh, and you know over the years we've been able to access lines of credit and various uh, working capital sources but uh, we never went out and, and raised a bunch of money and never went out and got a big bank loan to start the business it was all about you know getting the junk in the truck turning that into some revenue, turning that into some profit, reinvesting it back into the business and you know, keep you know, growing one step and one brick by brick uh, from that point on. All right, wow, H, that is uh, an incredible story indeed from where you began and what, uh, what he actually uh, created. Outstanding, I can see why you wanted to show this clip. It's, uh, let me tell you, that is just an amazing clip uh, I did a one-hour TV interview with him, and that's just only 10 minutes. Wow. Uh, but can you imagine? I mean, that is the American dream right there. And all the things that we were just talking about, Bobby, at the start of the show, right? getting started, right? right. They started around the kitchen or dining room table <laughs> yeah. with with his business partner and, the, and his business partner's mom, and they were joking around and brainstorming because basically she was telling them, hey, you guys ain't just going to be laying around the pool this summer. You need to go out and work. And, and, and she, so and she they, gave them the old beaten up white van. And she gave them uh, from her company's yeah. uh, a beat up white cargo van. Yeah. And they decided to do junk removal. Is that some? Who would have they thought? Took, that, yeah. Who who would think you could build a multi million dollar business removing junk? On junk, Bobby. That just blows my mind. What a lesson. Sure. A lesson that they started, they were college kids, and they took junk, and they made flyers. Right. Flyers and stuffed them in the mailboxes or neighborhoods. I can relate to that, to my old knocking on doors uh, back in college with roofing uh, for my, uh, uh, you know, as I was doing some things there. So think about it. Uh, they, then they created a business plan, right? Uh-huh. A business plan. Uh, that ultimately they they applied to at, at, at college, and they won the business plan, and oh, and also what was cool, initially when the mother had these ideas, she's the one the, the partners uh, Nick's partner's mother, they came up with the uh, uh, the, the college hunks hauling junk right? right. Think about the, the 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 attention grabbing name that they made the uh, and they, the logo the, the colors right the brand uh, that was outstanding. Right? How unique. Uh, and then also as things progressed, uh, I'm just trying to reflect back on that interview, is that uh, notice that they were doing junk removal, right? Mm -hmm. And then notice later on they added on and moving. Right. They added a complimentary service that tied into their existing brand. They started with one product and service and then expanded another offering with moving company. Right. Um, how cool was that? Um, also, I love the idea. I love the thing of it. They were, they, when they were, when they got out of college, after they won the business plan uh, in college, they went to work for consulting firms. Those two guys, and it was like six or seven months that they got bored with what they were doing, and then decided to go full time in the business. So think about it. You also have to know that when you're younger, you can take more risks when you're younger and getting started. Definitely. Go for things when you're younger. Uh, and sometimes you have to maybe be more prudent as you get older. If you have kids and families, you have to maybe be more prudent. But when you're young, you what an opportunity that, that and they went for, and look how it's paid off for them.
And I think um, age as well, when you're younger, you're a little bit more naive. You don't really focus on the risk because you, you, you think your life, you've got so many years ahead, right? It's not like when you get into your 50s and 60s, yeah. you're thinking about setting a business. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Also, what I love this section too is they did all the work themselves. Did yeah. we talk about that earlier? Yeah. You've got to be willing to get your, they were willing to do the work themselves to get their hands dirty. They were driving the trucks, loading the trucks, picking up the junk. I, I love this story when he's getting a complaint on the driving, and uh, he's the one driving, and he's getting the phone call. Right. Uh, but that's the thing is it's, it's about doing everything and anything to be successful, and that comes from the fire from within, the passion for building something. Also, another thing that I loved is that if you notice the quote, he mentions uh, something to the extent of he wanted to – he needed to – uh, work on the business right. and not in the business because a lot of times people start businesses Bobby and what did you do you just got yourself another full time job exactly because you got to do all the work yeah right. so when he's able to duplicate and then p take the time to build the business and work on the business not in the business and getting and that's how they started duplicating and now they have over I think over 100 franchisees around the country over right. 75 million dollars in revenue and, and that brand. new yeah and bobby that new office it's something else isn't it <laughs> what a state-of-the-art office and as i walk through that office with him i'm like wow state-of-the-art and he sees the vision for growth right but but bobby this is 15 years from start 15 years ago i'm sorry uh 12 years ago from starting officially right so they started small and building and building, and this new office was just, uh, they just got it a few months ago. Right. Uh, hey, so talk it's a, to that, expand on that, because a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, they have a dream, they have a vision, they want to start the business, right? But they, they don't think that it's going to take three to four to five years just to get decent traction. I mean, you did talk about hard work, but what's the law of average that you've seen before? Like, you're talking about them, 12 years to get to this point. So what's... What's the patience ratio? How many years should people yeah. vest themselves before yeah. they give it up? In, 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 well, you know, that's... I cannot give an answer to that. It really comes down to the entrepreneur. It comes down to the entrepreneur's commitment. Right. And the minute you start saying, I should give up, then, you know, it, it's all about your fire and desire and what you got going. And, yeah... And if that becomes a challenge because the entrepreneur falls in love with the business and doesn't want to give it up. Right. That's a reality. Uh, but, you know, as long as you're making changes and adjustments and, you know, testing the results and you're making things, then, you know, you continue on if, if, you, if the fire is there. And if it's not, if you, you know, think there's an alternative direction to go, those are things that are in the process that each entrepreneur needs to have that quiet time. Um, a quiet time. But you know what's amazing? Uh, I don't think it was in this seg segment. Nick had talked about, I had asked him, and we'll see these segments later on. I had asked him, what would he say to his younger self now, right. knowing what he knows? And he says, patience. There you go. He said, patience, because he thought he'd have 100 franchisees up in a couple of years. Right. You Not see, you think it's going to be fast and accelerate. Get it, you know. You, you, people think that they need to, to need to go out and get an office like that to start their business. <laughs> the reality work. is, right. start small, stepping stones. Um, we talked about ideas for your office space, your home office. Start out of your garage, your basement. Uh, you know, you can build up gradually. Uh, I love the story on that first sale. Yes. Uh, and, if, and if you recall, when they made that first sale for two hundred dollars to remove the junk, and then the storm opened up like it was a um, uh, reinforcing that they were just getting ready to start a, a journey and that's where it started yeah. they picked up that they made that first sale from a flyer in a mailbox that $200 sale and they were on that first step towards that journey of a $75 million a year company mm -hmm. and let me tell you these guys uh, Omar and Nick these guys rock and roll and the best is yet to come for these guys and their growth yeah. um, <laughs> and, and, and also Go ahead, go ahead, Bobby. I'm yeah, sorry. They weren't even sure what they were going to charge when the person asked them how much. And, and, and they were sort of hesitant and they were sort of surprised when the person said yes. It's, it <laughs> goes to show where you don't have to have all the details in place, right? You talked about that in the first show. 
you, you <laughs> don't have to have the details in place. Just get it action. Making that first right. sale is so critical. Right. I love the. He talked about money funding. I think right? uh, how they bootstrapped bootstrapped the yes. organization, and they didn't go out and raise money. They bootstrapped and they built it organically, uh, and built it and parlayed it up. So obviously there are bumps in the road. We'll sh we'll talk more about those later. But uh, it's it's impressive to see what they did, how they did it, and see we as entrepreneurs or uh, aspiring entrepreneurs. We can learn our lessons from people that are doing. Right. We could learn and get that inspiration, uh, their experiences from people that are doing it in the marketplace and learn from them. But ultimately, I always say the journey must be yours for you to direct yourself up to that mountain to make some things happen. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, H, let's wrap it up for the week for episode two at uh, the Business Zone TV show. How exciting. Yeah, let me, let, let me just be quick. And I know I've said this in the beginning of the show, but if you notice, a lot of times I always reinforce learning with space repetition. Sure, There's important. a method to my madness because you could hear it once, hear it a second time, and maybe the third time it starts to stick and resonate with you. Sure. Number one, you don't need to have a lot of money to be funded to start a company. You don't need to have a gazillion million dollars. You can start small. Take simple ideas like Nick Friedman did it on junk. Take your idea, your passion, your service, your product, what you want to do, monetize it. You don't need fancy offices to start. Keep searching uh, for information and, and, and trying and being uh, taking action and nurture that seed that you plant with your company to start bringing it to life. Um, you can start with low-cost marketing initiatives. What did Nick and Omar did? They took a flyer, mm -hmm. made some copies, and went to the mailbox right to there. Uh, and did some old school guerrilla marketing. Right. Uh, you're going to have to start by rolling up your sleeves and doing it all. Uh, and the critical element, I love that first sale, making that transaction right. and getting traction. That's where it's all going to start. Um, let me let me wrap up with the final quote of the week. Uh, our, our tradition that we started, isn't it, Bob? Yes, we have a tradition beautiful. Going. Love them. Episode two, now it's a tradition. Uh, quote of the week. Today's quote is this. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. Let me say that one more time. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The, the second best time is now. That means if you have an aspiration, you want to take control, you want to expand your income circle, you want to start a business, you want to become an entrepreneur, start now, start today. The years that you put in and the hard work will manifest your tree of opportunities will be there. But you have to start by planning now and getting things happen. So take changes, uh, take action, uh, make the changes, improve yourself, and go after your dreams. Those are the things I want to resonate here in episode two. And as, as always, Bobby, it's always a pleasure to hang with you on the Business Zone TV show. Hey, thank you, H. Incredible insights again, folks. Uh, it's a wrap for this week on the uh, Business Zone TV show, but before I want to remind you to go and visit Business Zone at TV, H. John Mejia, right? And uh, actually, you'll find him at hjohnmejia.com, right? And remember to visit Hammer Fiber, our sponsor, at hammerfiber.biz. And uh, also, uh, last but not least, really important, a couple of other things, maintenance here before we close out on the show. Uh, remember the live streams of the Business Zone TV show can be found and the archives at hammercommunity.com. And we go live every Tuesday at 12 p.m. North American Eastern. That's where we do it. And um, also, uh, we do have a Facebook page, and we want you to interact with us at a new kind of internet. So it's facebook.com. And uh, let me do that. Let me uh, cue that up for you guys. I think it's right here. Oh, it won't show up properly today, but when we go live, eh? sometimes you've got to just pay attention and not see everything with your eyes, right? Facebook.com forward slash and you kind of internet. I'll tell you why that's important. Like, comment, share, ask your questions for your chance at the Samsung 32 inch HD smart TV. It's a cash at plus cash prizes that will be awarded on Friday, December 15th via our live community update webcast every Friday. And we'll see you next uh, this coming Friday right after uh, the U.S. Thanksgiving, right? So uh, for H. John Mejia and the Business Zone TV show, I'm Bobby D, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>